Hey everyone, it's Fox from eModels here, back again finally. Tailplane has arrived. Let's get on with the build. So, as I said, welcome back. Uh, apologies for the long, long delays. Um, guys from eModels came up absolute trumps and got the tailplane sent to me. Uh, I had requested the tailplane replacement parts from Ravel, but that would have taken weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and all the weeks and some more weeks on top. Um, but Gav and the guys at eModels said, you know, why don't we try and get them for you? And they did, so the tailplane's now on. As you can see, I've done a little bit of work off camera. Um, I have glued all the main fuselage together now. This is all attached. Um, what I've got to do next, and I'm going to do some bits off camera. Um, I've got a little bit of a seam line here where the two halves of the fuselage go together. It's nothing major. Let's see if I can focus in on that for you. See a little bit of a seam line there. Um, I'm not going to use filler on that because it's not a major seam. All I've done is I've used some of the liquid cement just to quickly go over it, fill the gap a little bit, and then I'll sand that back uh, or use a modelling knife just to, to smooth it off. Uh, then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and get that primed. Uh, I won't show the priming because that's gonna be with a rattle can. I'm not gonna use the airbrush for that. It's just basic primer to get it on there. Uh, you'll note I've left the end piece off. This is purely so that, um, well, it's to allow me to paint the stripes. I'm not gonna use the decals. I'm gonna actually mask off and paint the stripes. Uh, and if the engine piece is in there, it's a real pain in the bum to try and mask off. So the engine piece will slot in in a bit, and then the back plate can just go on, and that can be glued on. And it can be painted before I glue it on as well. So uh, I'm just keeping it in separate modules. When you're painting things, when you're building a kit and you're planning on various paint techniques, especially if you're airbrushing, it's always good to try and plan around what you're going to do. Build it into modules so you can build the different modules, get them all painted, then put them all together. Um, you could put the end piece on and paint it, but you're just making more work for yourself. Uh, and a lot of modelling is about keeping stuff as simple as you can. You don't need to make more work for yourself. If I can do something in three brush strokes, I don't need to do it in 25 brush strokes. So what we'll do is I'm going to get this masked off, get the cockpit masked off, and mask off the schnoz, the intake at the front. And we'll get it primed, so I'll do that now. Let me just get my visor so I can see what I'm doing. Um, I don't need to be too careful with this. Oh, I can get the tape off. Um... You'll notice my modelling board, by the way, my cutting board is even more scruffy than ever. I just spill paint and stuff everywhere. I'm a nightmare. I can't keep paint neat ever. So, yes, my, my board gets dirtier and dirtier as time goes by. Uh, now, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Let's see if we can just... Hmm. Critical thinking, not my strength. Let's just snip that bit of tape. All I'm doing here, really, is just... A basic bit of taping over here just so I can not get paint in the cockpit. I'm going to paint this bit here dark grey anyway, this little side where the canopy is, um, and that's uh, going to be brush painted. So I'm not too fussed about that. So all I'm really doing is just protecting the cockpit interior now from any springs. So I'll just get that on there. So it doesn't have to be a work of art, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not fussed if it's a bit of a weird tape job. It's just more practical than aesthetic. Do, 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 do. So yeah, it's been uh, kind of a weird few weeks not being able to build this. But if I just put those scissors. So I did go to Ravel, and they did, and they probably will send them to me in the next few weeks. I'll probably get them turning up those missing tailplane parts. But uh, I've got some spare if I need them in the future. Uh, this is a fiddly bit now. I'm probably doing this all wrong. Probably a better way of doing this, but it's hot. Um, I've just been out to the shops about 14 times. I'm tired. My critical thinking abilities are not at their best right now. So now I'm just using a uh, bog standard Tamiya masking tape here. Uh, you can get it in different sizes: 8 mil, 10 mil. Um, I think my big fat one is a 15 mil. Is it 15 mil? 18mm. Um, Tamiya masking tape is absolutely fantastic. 
if you've never used it. I mean, there are all different types of tape you can use for masking. Uh, but the critical thing you need to remember is not to use tape that's so high tack, which means it's so sticky that it pulls all your paint off. Now, to me, a masking tape is great because it's sticky enough to stay where you put it and to stick to itself, which is annoying. Um, sticky enough to stay where you put it, but not so sticky that it will pull off any unvarnished paint, which is good. Um, I've seen people actually use bog standard sellotape, and I don't know why they do that. To me, a tape's paper based, it's not cellophane. Um, which is where Sellotape gets his name. A little bit of fact, trivia fact for you there. Um, I'm probably wrong about that actually, so feel free to add a comment saying I'm an idiot. Or just add a comment saying I'm an idiot anyway. It's probably true. Um, and what you can do, if, you, if you're ever worried about paint, if you're masking something off and you really don't want the paint to come off, uh, the safest thing you can do is just very gently just rub the tape on your trouser leg or any other part of clothing on your body and that will take a little bit of the tack off and that's totally not stuck Hooray! that will take some of the tack off the tape if you're ever a bit concerned um, there's probably an easier way to do this than I've just made a complete hash of it but uh, so yeah so it's uh, been an interesting couple of weeks waiting for this to happen I've uh, finished a project. I was building fine molds, 148 scale X wing. That's finished. It came out rather nicely. Uh, and I've got my next two projects planned. The next one is going to be, and I build this while I'm building this. Build this next project while I'm building this. Um, oh, as always. Apologies if my visor keeps coming into view because I've no idea what you can see and what you can't. Um, the next project will be Ravel's Easy Kit Land Speeder. I'm kind of kind of growing on those Easy Kits for fun for little quick builds. They're quite good fun. They're really simple. They're not the most detailed kits in the world, but they make a nice little fun build. But the Land Speeder kits quite big so what I'm planning on doing is not actually building it as Luke's land speeder but doing a bit of a custom job on it getting rid of the figures which frankly are just horrendous and using my own figures uh, make a little diorama so that'll be next uh, and then when that's done I'm going to build I don't want to say too much because I want it to be fun but I'm going to build Ravel's Fuchs Armoured Personnel Carrier but with a very special paint scheme that I'll say no more about just now uh, let's get rid of... so we're just getting this masked off masking is a vital part of the painting especially if you're going to be painting with spray paints or airbrushes or spray cans or what have you can be fiddly, um, doesn't always work, it can go horribly wrong and you can leave a hole and get paint in there, but it's really, in this case, this is just about masking off the bit I don't want to be sprayed. So you don't have to be neat and tidy, you don't have to be arty farty with it, it's just a case of cover up the bit you don't want covered in paint. Right, so what needs to happen now is I'm going to go outside and get this all primed up. Uh, for the priming, I'm just going to use uh, Tamiya's surface primer. They do a couple of different surface primers. Uh, the fine is generally a, a grey colour. Uh, they also have, well, they all also label as fine, um, which is white. Um, I'm not going to use the white one because the kit's white and I want to see where the primer is it's kind of obvious 
Um, but I also find the grey one's a bit more grippy. It's got a bit more coarser texture to it. The whole point of the primer is when you paint a model, if you just paint straight onto it, that paint's going to be all over the place. It's not going to give you the best coverage. It may not stick very well. And if, especially if you're brush painting, it's going to look kind of streaky. The idea of a primer is it takes the very smooth surface of the model and it makes it ever so slightly coarser. Um, similar effect to if I sanded the whole model. It just gives the paint something to stick to and bite into and helps your paint adhere to the surface better. Um, so I'm going to go away and get this primed. Uh, then I'll come back very briefly and explain what the next step is. And then we can crack on with the actual painting. So, back in a minute. And we're back. Right. Did a bit more than I uh, said I would. Um, gave it a coat of primer outside. Uh, once that was done, I noticed some of the seam lines were still a bit visible. Um, notably here and here. So I gave them a bit of extra sanding. Give it a bit more primer. Um, and then once that was done, I gave it a coat of uh, Humbrol Acrylic Spray. It's sea grey. Now you'll see why I'll do this in a second. It's an acrylic paint. It's an acrylic spray paint. Um, the reason I've done that is because I had a choice. Uh, when you're spray painting a model, you can... One of the time-honoured tra tradition tricks um, is to... Let me just check the focus. That's one of the traditions, is to check the focus. Uh, one of the time on the tricks is to paint um, black over the primer along the panel lines. Uh, so that when you paint the colour over the top, those areas will be a little tiny bit darker and you'll get some shadowing um, where the panel lines are, just to give you a bit of depth to the paint. However, another trick is an old ILM trick um, to do paint chipping which is to spray the model a grey colour, or whatever colour you want the undercoat to be, uh, and then mask off the bits that will be paint chips. I've gone for the second method, not the pre-shading method. What I'm going to basically do, this is the my chosen undercoat. Um, this will go underneath the white paint and the red paint. What I'm going to do is basically, I really must stop saying that, my plan is to use liquid mask to make some small areas where there'll be paint chips, as if the paint's come off and you can see this grey undercoat underneath. I've decided that grey's a good colour because it's futuristic and it's space undercoat of some sort. Um, who knows? Um, some modellers tend to do it uh, using metal shades. They'll spray a, um, spray the paint the, the model a metallic shade and then put some chips on, then paint the paint over the top. That's usually to suggest where paint's come off and you've got exposed metal. You get that a lot on Japanese fighter planes. Uh, in World War Two, towards the end of the war, the Japanese um, wanted to churn out paints quickly, so they stopped using undercoat and just paid, sprayed the paint straight on the plane, which is why a lot of sort of beaten and battered Japanese World War Two fighter planes have exposed metal all over the place. You see it on non-Japanese planes as well, but not quite as much. Um, Allied and Axis forces used to put undercoat on. So, so what I will do now is grab my Vallejo uh, liquid mask again. Now I'm going to struggle to get you to see all this because I've mounted this on um, a, a brass rod so I can actually do the work. Now I'm going to struggle for you to actually see any of this. I'm not going to do the whole thing now on camera. I'll do a little bit and show you and then I'll go off and do the rest uh, before we do the main paint. I'm just taking a little bit of the Vallejo. Again, it's Vallejo liquid mask. Or Vallejo. Vallejo. My Spanish is, well, non-existent. All I'm going to do is use some, as best I can, common sense, where paint would wear off on a, on a vehicle. Um, in space, not usually much of a problem, but I'm going to assume this is used for an atmosphere flight as well. So, dead simple. Cocktail stick. Uh, if it was a much bigger model and wanted bigger paint chips, you could use a brush. But it does tend to write your brush off because it gets gunky. And I'm hoping you can see all this because it's quite shadowy around here. I'll just turn the light on. Maybe it'll make things better. How's that? No, nope, that's even darker. Let me turn the light off. Turn the other light on. Oops. Yeah, you can't see anything now. Let's just leave the light off. Okay, so dead simple. I'm going to go follow the direction of the vehicle. It travels in the air, so it's that way. The vehicle tends to move this way. 
so let's put a little bit on the panel line so I'm going to put some around the panel line here I'm just tiny dots I'm not doing it everywhere oh that's gone funny never mind that didn't work so just tiny little bits just to suggest that's probably a bit too big where the paint's chipped and I'm trying to follow a natural pattern not perfect in any way but I'm trying to follow a natural pattern that paint would tend to do it wouldn't just be a nice round shape it would be some kind of chipping effect paint would flake off so let's do some around these edges leading edges and edges of things are always good because it's where the paint's the thinnest let's do one there that's probably a bit too big but I think it'll work uh, I'll also put some around the nose here somehow around the nose I'm going to have the red stripe um, you can't actually see that because it's not in shot it's going to be a red stripe here um, now I'll have I'll do the same chipping effect on the red paint for the stripes where I'll paint the ship white, put some chipping fluid on where the red's going to go and then spray the red paint and take the chipping fluid off. So I don't want too much of this on the nose. Um, I just want a little bit just to suggest some little chips and areas. Because most of this will be the red paint scuffed away to show the white paint underneath. We'll have some here. Apologies if this is shadowy, it's about seven o'clock at night, so lighting's not the best. Uh, put some around. Where shall I put some? I'll put a big splodge here just for effect of a big one, I think. And basically, what you'll do is when the white paint's on. And you want to expose the paint chips you just rub this stuff it's just basically latex uh, i'll have some on here these are going to be metal these guns so we're not going to need to do those and this is it this this is all that for me paint chipping is there are other methods to do it but this is the method i prefer So I will now go away and do this for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And when we come back, we'll get the uh, the white paint painted on. So, back in a bit. Right, <clears throat> I have added lots of masking to the model. Um, just little paint chips here and there, little dots and blobs, just to suggest the kind of chipping effect. Uh, I've done some underneath as well. So what we're going to do now is apply the, the uh, white paint coat. Um, I'm just going to spray it on. Uh, there's nothing else needs to be masked. I'm not going to mask up anything for the red stripes because that's later. So let's just get on with it, shall we? Um, might get a bit noisy in here because I've got my compressor and the spray booth. So apologies if it suddenly gets really, really loud and you can't hear me. If it makes me inaudible, I'll add some subtitles so you can hear what I'm saying. Right, let's give it a go. Spray booth on. Press it on. Right, let's give it a try, shall we? I'm just using Tamiya flat white for the base coat. Let's see what happens. I'm not going too heavy because I want some shadowing on there. I don't want it to be just basically white. I want to get some depth from the undercoat. So it serves a double purpose really. So there's paint chipping and for the, uh, some more paint through. Paint chipping and for the shadowing. Just taking my time. Adding the paint slowly. Thicker in some areas than others. It 
is supposed to be a white vehicle, so... Pink's being a bit lumpy, but I can live with it. Oops, stay there. Notice how I'm wearing gloves because this can get very messy otherwise. Um, I'm hoping that last section with the airbrushing came out. If you didn't see it before this bit, everything went horribly wrong, but luckily eventually everything came out okay. Um, got the white coat airbrushed on, looking nice and clean and shiny now. Uh, if you see the lumpy bits uh, on the bodywork, that's nothing to worry about, that's just the masking fluid. Um, not very neat round here, but that doesn't matter because that's going to be brush painted over with the dark grey anyway. I knew that would be kind of rough around the edges. Um, but pleased with how it's come out. Looking rather good. It is easy to get disheartened at this stage of the model making process because everything looks clean and shiny. There's no weathering or anything yet. There's no depth and no shadows. So don't get discouraged at this point if you start thinking, oh God, it looks a bit rubbish. I mean, I can see problems with this right now, but I know I'm going to be able to weather them out or work around them or correct them. But everything's come out okay. I'm quite happy with it so far. Um, strange day today. Everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. Most of it you didn't see. It was off camera, but Everything that could have gone base, base over apex has done. Very annoying, very frustrating. But sometimes that's how it works with model making. Sometimes you can't do any wrong. And sometimes everything you touch just goes to pot. Uh, but luckily, everything came out okay. That's going to do it for today. When we come back, I will most likely make a start on the red striping. Along the nose and around the sides. Get that masked off and painted. Then we'll take the masking fluid off and we'll carry on from there. Uh, but thanks as always for watching, uh, very nice to, to be able to provide you with these films, hopefully it's, you find it useful. Um, as always, do visit uh, our good friends at emodels.co.uk for all your modelling supplies, products, advice, anything you need. They're really sound guys. Um, if they don't sell it, you don't need it, I always say that. Uh, and they will go the extra mile for you, as you can tell by my tailplane, which they very kindly got for me. Uh, quicker than Ravel. Um, so go to emodels.co.uk for all your supplies. Also, don't forget to go to their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash emodels ltd. Yes, still getting it right. Not reading it off a piece of paper. Yes. Sometimes things stick in my brain for more than five minutes. Not often, but sometimes. Um, the Facebook page, fantastic community, loads of people on there, people showing off their work, all levels of skill, um, some fantastic fantastic things on there stuff you won't believe people have actually made in miniature um, so do go along have a look join in the chats post your own work get it up there show it off to the world no matter what level of school you are beginner professional expert hobbyist doesn't matter it's all good it's all just we're all in, got the same passion so you know feed that passion um, so that'll do for today i say we'll come back we'll get the start getting the red stripes done so again thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Adios, amoebas. Bye.